Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today what I want to talk about and actually show you a demonstration of is how to break down rough lumber. And what triggered this is just last week I happened to be watching one of the woodworking shows on television and they had some rough lumber and they were breaking it down, getting it ready to make it usable. Breaking it down means uh, cutting it with their table saw, getting it, planing it, all of those things, getting it ready to start making furniture with, taking it from roughed lumber to dressed lumber. And the procedure that they used, I felt, was completely wrong uh, in that they started off using their table saw to do that. And if you have a big table saw with a three horse or a five horse motor on it and a nice great big workshop, you can maybe get away with some of that stuff. And of course if you have a saw with a splitter uh, or a, a riving knife on it. Now not all of us have saws like that and I know that a lot of people out there, there's thousands of saws out there that don't have splitters and don't have riving knives and you may be getting rough lumber and there is a proper way of breaking that down that's safe and easy to do and that's what I want to talk about today is how to do that. Now I've taken my fence completely off this table saw so that I would have a nice flat surface to show you and this is why cutting raw lumber like this and, and dress, starting to dress it on a table saw is not a good idea because you have, see this, how it rocks like that? That's, that's a danger. You can't put a fence, you can't put a piece of wood like this on a saw and, and expect the fence, a flat fence, it's, it's going to ride, it's going to bind. Uh, if you're, you're lucky, it'll only bend your blade. It'll, there's a possibility that, it'll, that it will jam. It becomes a danger. But it, it, you, the, a board like this will rock this way, but also when you get it like this, it's also rocking either one way or the other. It will rock that way as well very often. So not only is it rocking this way, it can rock this way as well. So there's much safer ways to do that, and that's what we're going to talk about today is how to dress this lumber in a safe manner. This is one of my lifts of lumber. This is my outdoor lumber that when it comes in wet, the ends get coated and it sits here for one to three years until it gets down to 17, or sorry, to about 14 percent. Now you can see that most of the lumber that I buy is, this is eight quarter, in fact this is nine quarter, this is actually two and a quarter inches thick and in a lot of cases they're seven or eight inches wide and they're wider than any of the equipment that I have so I actually have to break this lumber down so that it'll fit on my machines because my jointer is only a six inch jointer so that's what I'm going to do today is start to dress that down and what we need to end up with is two sides that are absolutely flat and square to one another and this is my indoor stack of wood, uh, or at least a part of it, and this is where the wood from outside, when it gets down to about 14 percent, the wood comes in here and it's left for another year or so to get down to seven or eight percent, uh, seven or eight or nine percent, whatever it is. Um, and you can see in here there's a lot of wood that's again eight or nine quarters thick, so that's two, two, two and a quarter inches thick. I do have a little bit of four quarter, that, so that's one inch thick, uh, but you can see that most of it is two inch thick, and that's what we're going to dress today, is some two inch thick oak. Now normally, if I were breaking this down for myself, is I would be using my big 16 inch Makita ripping saw, ripping band saw. And I know that a lot of you don't have this kind of a saw, so instead I'm going to do the same thing that I did before I got this saw. I'm going to be using my little circular saw to start breaking the lumber down, and you'll see how that goes. Now I know most of you will have a, a circular saw that you can use this to break down your raw lumber with, but before you start cutting, uh, you want to make sure that you have a good blade, and I know I've already talked about 
10 inch blades, but the same is true for seven, seven and a quarter inch circ saw blades. And you can hear the resonance. This is a blade. This is the blade that came with that saw. This is my preference, and you can hear the difference. And we've already talked about the vibration and what that does does in our section on table saws. So you can buy an inexpensive saw, but whatever you do, make sure you buy a good blade. And there's a big difference between the kerf on a lot of these blades. An inexpensive saw will come with a fairly wide kerf and you want the narrowest kerf you can because you're going to be cutting through a lot of lumber. So what I'm going to be doing basically I have this piece of plywood uh, there are two pieces of thin plywood that I have um, strapped together, screwed together actually and I'm going to be using them. This is the the side, the abs the factory side of a sheet of plywood and I'm going to be using that as my straight edge and I'm going to be using my circular saw to run down the length of this so I'm going to now go about clamping this onto my hardwood, onto my oak here that I'm going to start breaking down. In this case I've actually set my board that I'm going to use as a straight edge. I've actually set that at two and a quarter inches on the full length of this board. Now this is a, as I mentioned before, this is actually a nine quarter, uh, so it's a two and a quarter inch thick piece of wood. I'm not going to be able to cut this in one pass with my circular saw. It's just too much wood. Uh, so in this case I'm actually going to do at least three passes, maybe four, and I'm not going to photograph every one of them because you don't need to see the entire process of cutting through this wood to understand what I'm doing. Now before I cut, there's one thing that I need to remind you of that you're going to need to account for the distance from the fence to the blade and you'll need to add that to the fence. So in my case this is one and three eighths inches and I wanted to cut two and a quarter inches so I need to add two and a quarter and one and three eighths and that gives me roughly uh, four, uh, sorry, three and three quarters inches, a little bit shy of three and three quarters inches uh, and that's what I've set my fence at. So let's go ahead and start cutting. Now that's the first pass and I've set the blade at roughly about an inch and a quarter. I'm going to set it now to about two inches and make the second and third passes. Okay, that's given me, I've been able to uh, saw this apart now, uh, and it's given me one clean, free, flat surface. Uh, and now I can go ahead now and start working on the jointer. Um, I'll have to cut this uh, thin part off here, but um, now I can start working on the jointer. Now that I've got one flat area, then I'll turn it over and make two flat areas on the jointer. So let's let's go to the jointer now and we'll do that next step. Now my circular saw didn't go quite deep enough in some spots here so there's a little bit of variation here. 
I'm just going to use a plane and just clean up a couple of these little ridges along here so that this is going to be absolutely flat when we get this onto the jointer. Okay, let's clean that up. Now, I want you to see this. This is the same flat surface, and look at what we have now. See, there's no rocking. There's, there's a little bit of rocking this way, but there's no dipping, and that's what we need to make sure that we eliminate. So let's go over to the jointer now, and we'll start uh, dressing this side. Okay, that edge is nice and flat. Uh, what I'm going to do now is move along and put this against the fence and now I'm going to true up this side so that we have two sides that are going to be square and flat. Okay, here we are back on the table saw, and you can see that this is absolutely flat. That's one side, and there's the other side. There's no rocking. Now is the time that this, the rest of this wood, so there's the two sides, the two surfaces that are done, and there's the two surfaces that still need to be either sawed or planed, whatever, whatever you're going to do. Now, the important thing about dressing lumber is this, that it's important to do these two sides so that they're flat and square to one another and then the rest of the wood you can then cut on a, as I say, on a, on a table saw or a, a plane or whatever you're going to do. But what's important is the last step that you do is to cut the board to length. Now that's not something I invented, that's in all of the shops that I've ever worked in, you always dressed lumber, you dressed all of the sides, and then you cut it to length. And if you do that, in a lot of cases, uh, there's barely any snipe here. In fact, you won't even be able to see it on the, uh, on the camera. There's a very tiny bit at the end here. But the point of that is that when you cut the last cut that you make, after you've dressed the the width and the breadth of the board is you cut the length and that way you can cut the snipe off. And that's what I was taught on how to dress lumber and it's worked marvelously for 40 years, 30 or 40 years, uh, and it's a tried and true method that I was taught and seems to work very good. So, I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.